Hi, I'm Sarah the Gardener. And finally, at this late hour in the day, the wind has dropped. It's been blowing quite hard all day, so talking to you would have been next to impossible. But I have been in the garden, I have been working very hard. I have a group of people coming to visit my garden on Sunday afternoon, and it's been a bit mm, neglected because of all that work I did on my super secret project. So now I've been whipping it into shape. There's still a lot to do, but the weather forecast for tomorrow is good. And I've got Sunday morning if I really need to. But let me show you what I've been up to. I have been working so hard. Come and see, come, 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 come. Right. I cleared away the old pumpkin patch, which was long overdue. Now each year we have a family giant pumpkin competition and this is our only worthy contender, it's our only contender really. Um, and so I had to figure out who it actually belonged to. So if we come over here, let's see. this is Hubby the Young Gardener's stick and there is no residue of pumpkin anywhere. This is the Joeyosaurus' stick. He's a little bit cat obsessed. And once again, no trace of a pumpkin residue. And this one, Tim the helper. Tim's pumpkin. Well, I have to say, sorry Tim, no sign of a pumpkin. Now, this is where it may get a bit contentious. Here is a sign of pumpkin. And I can only but assume it's mine because it's not one of those. But I can't find the label. But if we trace it, let's have a look. Oh! What a surprise! It goes straight to the giant pumpkin. So that makes this baby mine. I'm the winner! Me! Oh my gosh, I'd like to thank the wonderful people who supplied the compost. And the people who dug. And the people who watered. And all the people who kept the weeds down. Hold on a minute. That was me. This is mine and a well-justified win. If they only looked after their pumpkins half as well as I look after all of them, well, maybe one day we'll get a big one. I'll pop this on the scales and um, let you know how much it weighs. Right. Winner. I'm a winner. Yeah. The flowers are still looking lovely. Now, I learnt a wee trick because I've been doing a bit of deadheading, which is new to me. And I've got these dahlias, you see. Hang on, let me go on the other side. Okay, so let's just come in close. I've got these dahlias, and it's quite clear to me that that needs deadheading because, well, it's going brown and icky. But this one doesn't look like it's going brown and icky. How do I know? if that's a new flower or something I should deadhead. So I had a look on the great big internet and that needs deadheading, it's finished. So if it's pointy like that, that means it's finished. If it's a little button shape, all round and buttony, that means it's a new thing. So just clarifying, old, new. Now that I've figured that out, I've got a bit of deadheading to do on these dahlias. There are still loads of delicious raspberries because it's still very warm. Oh, look at that, yum. Oh, and look, there's another one hiding under that leaf. I 
I've freed these plants from the weeds, but there's still more work required. And my mustard cover crop where the potatoes were is looking fab. The currants, red and black, are good. They just need pruning once all the leaves have fallen off. The leeks are good. And underneath these protective grids is the broad beans because this is going to be the bean bed next year, next season, well later in the year, because the beans were there before and now they're going to be here. Although I was such a plonker because I thought this was going to be the bean bed. Don't know why. So I enriched an area, planted the seeds, and then went, oh no. So I dug out all the bits I enriched and moved it over there. I still have to sort out the tomatillos in this bed. They've gone nuts. But so have the peanuts. I'm really hoping for a fab harvest underneath that. The brassica bed still needs attention so we won't dwell on this. So does the salad bed. Now the carrots and parsnips are relatively in order. I'm just waiting for a frost to sweeten the parsnips, but I'm not sure it's ever gonna come. Oh, I'm quite unapologetic about the strawberries. Um, I've decided I'm gonna put them in raised beds. I'm gonna split them into three. Three raised beds that I can get the mower in between. So then each year, so the one year, the two year, and the three year will be in a separate raised bed, so I'll know where I am. The asparagus is starting to really go yellow. This is an indication of how close we actually are to when you normally need to chop them down in June. The shortest day is only six weeks away. Can you believe it? Six weeks. Where has the year gone? I also sowed a cover crop where the tomatoes were. It'll get dug in well before it needs to be, but at least it's better than nothing. Peas? Yeah. Got out of hand. Now will this butternut make it to fruition in this weather? Winter is only two weeks away. The herb garden has been sorted. The basil's having a new lease of life. We're still getting peppers, but I wouldn't advise you to eat these purple ones. Oh my gosh, burn with fire. They are so hot. But the rest of the peppers are doing fine. I got my early garlic in this week, so we shall see how they turn out. With a bit of luck, there'll be no rust this year. I need to weed the spinach. And the artichokes. With this weather, I wouldn't be surprised if there was an artichoke in there. And my lupin cover crop, where my cucumbers were. Looking good. Now we've got yams in here, but I'm waiting till the foliage completely dies down before I harvest them. And the Jerusalem artichokes are probably ready to go. All the woods, wood stalks are dry. See, the thing is, it's been really warm. I mean, check out the soil temperature. Hang on. Here we go, soil, 19.7 degrees in my soil. The air temperature is 17.2, but it is almost half past four in the evening with winter two weeks away. But that's warm enough to grow beans in. So, yeah, it's a bit of a shocker. And with all the work I've been doing, almost filled my compost bin. It's pretty cool. The weed's doing great, and I have a story to share with you from earlier in the week. It's kind of nuts. So I've just been feeding the birds and even in spite of my complicated contraption, well actually it wasn't, to keep the birds away they still got in. 
and as you can see it's quite a patchy load of wheat but what I've done is I've reseeded some more so it's more wheat and effectively fed the birds some more but I have a plan I have I have snakes um, I went to the local cheapy store and cleaned them out of plastic snakes the, there were more the children have hidden them from hubby the ungardener he will find them in unusual places over the coming weeks I can't find them so I'm not very happy about that I'm sure he's not going to be happy about that either when he finds them but I'm going to try with these snakes to put them in the garden and see if they scare off the birds because I'm not sure if it's going to work because snakes don't live here there are no native snakes there are no non-indigenous snakes there are no snakes full stop in New Zealand so either there'll be some primal instinct where birds will acknowledge that there are snakes and stay away or they'll think they're giant worms and think they've lucky stars have all come in at once so well, I'm going to scatter these throughout the garden and see if it makes a difference snakes I could be onto a winner here could solve all my problems although they're very creepy and I don't like them and it's <laughs> I'm glad there are no snakes here right here we go Well, I reviewed the footage and I think there might have been a waste of time. The snakes didn't appear to bother the birds at all. But on closer inspection, they didn't eat around the snakes. So all the seeds are actually still there in the immediate vicinity of the snakes. Um, so maybe I need to just find the snakes that the kids have hidden. birds hmm. I'll find a solution that suits them one day I won't stop trying Bloody birds. so the Sun's just set behind the hill and so it's probably time to go in it's not really cold so I really begin to wonder whether winter is actually going to come I guess soon enough that's the answer but I worked really hard this week and so I'm gonna go inside and have a well-deserved glass of wine take care thanks for watching and if you really enjoy this don't forget to subscribe because there's always something interesting going on in my garden so come again soon and take care bye bye